This video looks at calculating frequency responses of systems which include right half plane factors. So in terms of the overview, what are we doing? We're looking at what is frequency response and why, it is, why is it useful. And at the moment, we're focusing on this. How do I actually compute the frequency response? Later on, we will look at uses of frequency response. So some background. In the previous video, we showed an efficient method for determining frequency response gain and phase for a system transfer function, assuming that transfer function could be factorized. And essentially, what you did is you wrote down the gain and phase for each factor separately, and then used the rules of complex numbers summarized here. The modulus of the product is the product of the moduli, or the phase of the product is the sum of the phases. And we recognized certain things. So if we had a factor, something like s plus a, then we could write down by inspection that the gain was the root of omega squared plus a squared, the phase, tan to the minus one of omega over a. If we had the same factor in the denominator, we got similar expressions here. Now what was the caveat? These simple formula are for left half plane factors only. So it was assumed that a and b were positive. So what are we going to do if a and b are not positive, if they're negative, and we have right half plane factors. So that's what we want to do here. And we'll start with an example. So you'll see we've given you a simple transfer function, g of s equals a minus s. And we want to calculate the gain and phase. Now you'll notice the warning highlighted in red here. To make sure you don't make a mistake, we advise you always sketch the complex number you're interested in before you start. And that will make sure that you get the phase in the correct quadrant. If you don't do a sketch, there's probably a 50% likelihood you'll get the phase wrong by 180 degrees. Now, we'll start with the gain. Actually, the gain is easy because the fact that you've got an a minus j omega as opposed to an a plus j omega really makes no difference to the moduli. The moduli is still the root of omega squared plus a squared. That's the easy bit. What about the phase? So I've plotted this complex number here. And you'll see I've plotted a particular example, 1 minus 0.5j. And you'll see it's got the same structure as this complex number we've given here. And what you're interested in is what is the phase? Well, if I mark the real axis, there it is. I mark the origin, there it is. Then clearly the phase is this angle here. And you can see the phase is between 0 and minus 90. So you know what you're looking for, an answer between 0 and minus 90. And now I can write that down by inspection. Here it is. It's minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over a. Omega being the imaginary part, a being the real part. And I will assume that when I do the tan inverse, I take the normal answer of between 0 and 90. And so the minus sign out front will then make it between 0 and minus 90. Separate example. What happens if I have this, g of s equals s minus a? Now, this is slightly different, as you'll see in a minute. So again, we recommend you sketch first, so you don't make a silly mistake. First, for completeness, let's look at the moduli again. You'll see it's the same formula as with left half plane factors, so nothing to do there, really. Now, what about the sketch? You can see we've got a very different sketch here. Here I've done an example, minus 0 0.5 plus 2j, which you'll see matches the structure of this complex number here. Now, where's the argument? Well, first, let's mark the origin. There it is. Let's mark the positive real axis. There it is. And so the argument is here. And so what you can see is the argument is between plus 90 and plus 180. However, the values that we know are this value, which is omega, and this value here, which is a. So we can calculate the angle in there, alpha, using a simple tan inverse. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write down that theta is 180 minus tan to the minus 1 of omega over a. So you'll see this is quite a different formula from the one we got from the previous example. Now, what have we done now? We've put the factor into the denominator. 
So we've written g of s equals 1 over s minus a. So again, as before, we're going to recommend that you do the sketching. The gain, I'm not going to worry about. That's straightforward. This is the same example as last time. So what we were doing is we were saying we're interested in this angle here, theta. And the way we're going to get it is by first calculating that angle alpha. But what you need to be doing is saying, OK, that gives me the argument for this complex number j omega minus a, I circle it again so you can see j omega minus a, but that's in the denominator so I need to add a minus sign to get the actual argument. So what does that give us? It gives us this, minus into 180 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over a. So a summary. The gain and phase for right half plane factors are summarized next, but I would remind you, always sketch to make sure you don't make a silly mistake. So here we go. If we have something like a minus j omega, then you'll see that the phase is minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over a. If you have 1 over a minus j omega, then you're going to get phase of 10 to the minus 1 omega over a. It's a positive phase in this case. Second summary, if you have something like j omega minus a, then the argument is 180 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over a. And if you've got 1 over j omega minus a, you're going to end up with 10 to the minus 1 omega over a minus 180. But I'm not recommending you memorize this formula. It's much more reliable just to do the sketch and work it out each time. Some examples then. What is the gain and phase of this g of s? So. Let's first of all put it down in its normal form. So I've got 5 over j omega minus 2 root 3. So I'm going to do my little sketch so I don't make a silly mistake. So I'm going to write minus 2 root 3 is here. Omega's here. So there's my complex number. There's the argument that I'm interested in, theta. So I'm going to write down that theta equals 180 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 2 root 3. However, you remember that this particular complex number is in the denominator, so I've now got that the argument of g is going to be minus 180 plus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 2 root 3. Now, in terms of the gain, the gain is straightforward, as with left half plane factors, so I can write down by inspection 5 over the square root of omega squared plus 2 root 3 all squared. Next example then. So here, a subtle difference, we're saying what's the output, in other words, we're looking for y equals a sine t plus phi. So we're looking for a and phi, where a is the gain and phi is the phase shift. And implicitly, we've set omega equals 1 because it's just sine t. So again, you'll notice there's a right half plane factor. So I'm going to do my sketch before I start. I'm going to look at this 1 minus s and recognize this is 1 minus j omega. And so I'm going to do my sketch. I've got 1 here minus j omega down here. So my complex number is down here, and there's my phase theta. So what we've got is the argument of 1 minus j omega is minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega. So I'm not going to make a silly mistake. And now, therefore, the argument of g is minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega. That's for the 1 minus s. And then I'm also going to get a minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega from the s plus 1. So you've got minus 2 10 to the minus 1 of omega. If I now substitute omega equals 1, I'm going to get minus 2 10 to the minus 1 of 1, which is minus 90. <laughs> now finally, the modulus is straightforward. So the modulus of g you're going to get the square root of omega squared plus 1 from the numerator and the square root of omega squared plus 1 in the denominator. So here the modulus is always 1. Another example. 
slightly more complex you'll see we're adding more factors but again I'm going to reiterate always do your sketch and you won't make a silly mistake so the s minus 3 I'm going to rewrite as j omega minus 3 and now I know where it's going to be I've got minus 3 here I've got a j omega here so the complex numbers there and there's the argument I'm looking for so the argument of j omega minus 3 is going to be 180 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 3 and therefore the argument of g is going to be 10 to the minus 1 omega over 2 that's from the s plus 2 minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 4 that's from the s plus 4 minus and I'll put some brackets here 180 minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 3 and that's from the s minus 3 and the gain again is straightforward because left half plane right half plane factors give the same formula so you get the square root of omega squared plus 4 on the top and the square root of omega squared plus 9 into the square root of omega squared plus 16. Some conclusions then. We've shown how you can determine the gain and phase of simple factors with right half plane roots and we've advised that you should always sketch the complex number associated to the right half plane root to ensure that you don't make a silly error associated to allocating the phase in the wrong quadrant. And we've given you some examples, including those with multiple factors, uh, some of which are left off plane, some right off plane.